Hello and welcome back to the penultimate interview at <laughs> European <laughs> Utility Week. Uh, but I'm quite excited about this interview because it takes me back to some of my uh, roots and uh, uh, we are joined by Felix is the product line manager at Cisco Systems for Internet of Things mm -hmm. and we were talking a little bit of off air and I didn't particularly want to spend the time talking about how many devices are being going, go, going to be mm. connected to mm. the internet. Mm -hmm. I think we all know what that <laughs> and we all Very know true. what's happening. Um, it was also particularly interesting is uh, we did a webinar with iTron and your, t uh, your team, mm. uh, not you specifically, but mm. mem members of your team for sure, uh, talking about uh, the IPv6 standard mm. now being mm. adopted as a, a commission issue there. So, all of that mm. set into context, mm. the question I want to ask you is, what does that allow you to do? Mm, 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 you know, yeah. Where are we going with this? Right, right. No, well, first, thank you for having me on yeah, here. It's, yeah. it's very exciting. Cisco's extremely excited about the uh, smart grid and, and internet of things. So, so basically, what our, our vision is that to have a common IPv6 architecture, and it's not specifically about IPv6 itself, it's about what it brings. Things like network security, quality service manageability, reliability, the things you need to build a true multi-service network. So what IPv6 enables you is have more flexibility and modularity to connect multiple different types of devices over multiple physical communication technologies for different al applications. It really makes data free and available and more accessible so you can have more pervasive monitoring and control of the electrical grid. So it's, it's a very modular system. T IP and TCP UDP is a common set of protocols that many uh, application vendors understand. So it, it frees up the application vendor to have more access to more data and to have more analytics and to have more control over the grid itself. So now it'll enable broader, much, much more innovation within the market and allow much more than just looking at use cases that we're talking about today, like smart metering, distribution, automation. Now with an IP architecture, it frees up the, the data to allow many more use cases over time. So what you're doing is effectively creating a, an abstraction. I, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, mm -hmm. virtualization came into the data great center, term. for yeah, example. Exactly, you're, great term. You're like uh, saying, oh, now you can do that. So mm -hmm. we, we've got this abstracted layer, we, yes. you know, it's a horizontal bar, yeah, uh, yeah, and exactly. uh, we're building blocks on top of that. Absolutely. What are some of the things that you are either seeing mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. or that you guys have and mm -hmm. I know this gets done all the time, thought yeah. about, well, this is now possible. Mm -hmm. If someone wanted to do it, they could. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, now it allows a lot more different types of traffic flows. So, for example, with today's model, you have sort of north-south-bound communications between devices in the field and the control center. With an IP network, it allows much more peer-to-peer -peer communications. So there's a lot more sort of decentralization that could occur within the grid to handle more latency-specific use cases or pushing even intelligence down to your, within the distribution grid itself. So you can have much more interaction between the communication network and the application decision making. Not all the decisions need to be have to be made at the central control center we think it's going to become over evolve over time to a hybrid approach we put the application intelligence into the on the medium voltage feeders and have local decision making to control solar or distributed generation workforce automation yeah. uh, and, and, and this is like device to device to device decision exactly. making peer to peer communications decision. device to device communications but doing it in a way that's secure scalable and manageable so because that was one of the things when um, I first started in the energy space, everybody was mm -hmm. talking about protocols and uh, yeah. what the delivery methods are, and yeah. uh, uh, you know. And having come from a converged network space, IT mm -hmm. telco space, mm -hmm. I was like, it exists, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, you yes. know, it, it, IPv4 didn't have enough address, uh, addresses, yeah, all right, fine, but yes. you know, we've solved that. The model that we're applying to smart grid has been improving in other markets for decades mm -hmm. in the terms of convergence of multiple applications over an IP architecture. So at converging voice, video, and data in enterprise and service provider markets, we're just leveraging all the same principles of network design now to smart grid. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So there's a tremendous ecosystem of IT professionals who already know how to build net, uh, multi-service networks over IPv6, and now IPv6 gives you the scalability to do it uh, again at large scale. Because that must come back to a thread that's been running through the interviews about mm -hmm. skills and skills and mm -hmm. skills mm -hmm. and the more 
different proprietary systems you're using, yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 you know, the more fragmented your skill space. Yeah, whereas, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Historically, to date, all the, most communication networks have been built for a single application on proprietary protocols. So you have a specific customized uh, intelligence or knowledge of that one application, that one network. Now that we're going to a horizontal IPv6 network, the, the, the knowledge base of how to manage these networks is, uh, grows dramatically. And that'll help lower the operational costs for utilities and for... So uh, let me push you a little bit. Let's, uh, let's uh, perhaps try and blue sky some use cases uh, mm -hmm. that... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, We've done the job. We've yeah. got all our devices. They're all busy talking to each other. We've got uh, we've got our network layer. What are, what are some of the applications that you are already seeing talk of? You know, they might not be in production, but right, utilities right, right, are going right. I get it now. Here's here's some stuff I can do. Well, I mean, some cases are things like microgrids, some places where you have local decision making being made with local pockets of, of generation and distribution happening. So you have multiple producers and consumers. This is, this is I mean, there has been a lot of talk about things like microgrids, but with, what, what IP enables is that kind of local decision making, local in, decision, peer-to-peer uh, -peer communications within different devices. So distributed and, generation, microgrids, those and, are some of the and, examples. And is that b uh, because the, um, sort of IP layer and the mm -hmm. data layer or the top of that is mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. needed within a microgrid because you've got mm -hmm. variable power uh, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. so on. But does it I also make it more cost effective? Yeah, it, I think one of the reasons why there are multiple different types of devices, it's not a homogeneous network. There's mm -hmm. multiple different inputs and types of sensors. When you have a very heterogeneous network of types of community energy storage or distributed generation, multiple different types of inputs, um, you have to have uh, a common abstraction layer, virtualization layer, to allow you to transport multiple services over a common IP network, but doing it in a way that's manageable by the utility. Um, so, so the manageability and virtualization go hand in hand. And how do you do, again, security at large scale? So again, that's what IP provides. But, but, but this must be a whole different mindset yeah. change within the utility in mm -hmm, terms of mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. management is done. You said it earlier on, yeah. it, it, it was a very linear space where, yeah. uh, you know, command went that way, much yeah. the same as their commodity went one way, and they're now right. working out how the, that right. two-way flow works. So the challenge is not in the communications architecture. Those problems have been solved. The, the problem is more organizational challenges, process changes, business process changes that have to flow along with now the paradigm shift on the, on the communication layer. Are, are you now seeing collisions whereby, uh, mm. you know, if we use technology to tie SCADA up mm -hmm. with uh, uh, you know operations or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it is by default forcing entities yeah. that may not have interface as much to interface. Yeah. Now we're seeing this replicated a lot of, across a lot of different industries. This could be smart cities, smart grid, other types of you know oil and gas and other types of industries where there are different organizational silos that do not see the, the bigger picture of what a converged IP network can enable. And so uh, that's what's the big draw. The big hindrance we see for the adoption of smart grid is the organizational silos within these entities and, and, and looking at more of this, again, more holistically. And that uh, uh, that's really interesting because that was replicated in telecoms as well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 but uh, perhaps to a more uh, uh, organic layer. But certainly when yeah. virtualization hit yeah. data centers, that really caused some of that as well. And this must sure. be at a much bigger scale than, uh, than that. Right. So, uh, I'm going to let you off the hook a bit and relax a bit, but I'm going to give you a, <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you a, a different job. Okay. Um, uh, as I mentioned, this is a penultimate interview. Uh -huh. You've been having lots of conversations. You've uh, enjoyed some of the uh, presentations. I'm going to give you a whole new job title. Okay. Uh, you're, you're my roving reporter. All right. Um, All right. I like this. What would you say have been some of your highlights, not necessarily in the field that you work with, but some mm -hmm. of the discussions that may have uh, uh, sparked some new ideas for you or, or, or just been interesting? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In terms of the show here yeah, today? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think the, in general, the, uh, um, the, the excitement sort of around, around smart grid, but what the possibilities are, I think in terms of the, the types of sensors, I think the, the types of uh, communication, what well, the communication network is now enabling, looking at all these different types of environmental sensors, a lot of the um, different types of, I mean, distribution automation sensors, a lot of what's going on within the home lo load control, the, the, the 
plethora of different devices that are now looking at being connected. Now that we have looking at IP communications, the, the, the types of devices are growing exponentially. So that, that has been quite exciting. Um, uh, and, and, and on that note, because uh, mm -hmm. I, I did hear that there's a lot of people talking about uh, creating this um, mesh of devices within the home mm -hmm. and then uh, jo uh, you know, mm -hmm. potentially joining it up or not joining mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. do, do you not think that actually in the fullness of time the most efficient thing to do is mm -hmm. to join all that home automation up with the uh, utility energy companies so that mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. let mm -hmm. the smart tech uh -huh, uh -huh. manage our home mm -hmm. at its mm -hmm. most operationally efficient. I, isn't that where we just got to go? Uh, that, that, that's a big uh, big step forward. That, that would be a big leap forward for utilities to actually kind of have more control over devices in the home. I mean, there's, well, obviously there's use cases, things like direct load control and demand well, response. Uh, yeah. um, but for actually truly managing, kind of having those devices connected onto the network itself would be uh, your, the, the, the boundary of the, the separation of a utility network from the home network. There still needs to be kind of a, a clean separation between from a security uh, perspective and management. Is there, I'm going to have yeah. a bit of fun here, but yeah. isn't there, uh, and maybe I'm kind of uh -huh. unique because I'm a bit of an early adopter, but uh -huh. I kind of feel that I, I would probably pay my utility some sort of fixed tariff mm. in return for them managing my house so mm. that it's consuming its energy in the most optimal way. Right, right. Uh, but I would, you're right to a degree, want some yeah. form of control about yeah. m m the data I'm allowing them to see. Yeah. But I wouldn't have that big a problem with them seeing yeah. that data. I think the key is choice, allowing the consumer to have choice. So giving the consumer options, so if there's what they want to be have controlled, giving them, giving them incentives. Uh, that's really the key thing that comes to the key consumer issues that we've been seeing. One is obviously on privacy and data privacy. Um, so this is the consumer's data. It's their choice what how that data is used. The utility is just storing that, holding that data, but it's still owned by the consumer. That's a, uh, privacy by design, but also just more um, let the consumers choose what they, they would allow the, the utility to control and not control. No, That's the key. Uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And thank you for that. And we, and we have yeah. come to the end of our time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it does fly. Uh, yeah. uh, the, the, the amount of people who go, uh, oh, I don't know whether we have enough time to talk about, but it's been a uh -huh. fascinating conversation. Uh -huh. uh, and I'd, I'd like to thank you as well for watching. Uh, we mentioned the webinar yeah. we did with uh, Cisco and iTron. Uh, if, if our uh, CMS system is doing its job right, somewhere when you're watching this uh, <laughs> video there's a link to that webinar if not go ahead and find that because it's worth watching and uh, thank you again for watching and thank you as well for being in the studio with us no, today. thank you for thank inviting you. me thank, thank you, thank you.